Hey, this is Patrick from Frontlink. Today, I'm excited to share a brand new action that can be used really nicely in building AI applications. So the new action is called the Web Scraper. And what it does is it simply takes a URL that's passed in as the one field, and then it returns the text content of the web page. So it's just for one page. Um, it's not a multi-page scraper, it's very simple. So in this case, I'm gonna show you how I set up a very simple app that has an input field where I can type in the website and then a button that submits it to the web scraper, passes it to the OpenAI request and asks it to summarize the content into five bullet points and then it shows it in the user interface. So here's what that looks like in the editor and I will show you the live app first and then we can go from there. So I'm gonna type in the uh, Frontly website. So www.frontly.ai and I'm gonna click summarize website content. So it's running, it's grabbing the text from there and there you go, it, it's very quick. Um, and I've got a nice little summary, five bullet points. And just to show another example, I'm gonna grab this link from the Apple website from the MacBook uh, page, and I'm gonna click summarize website content. So I think it takes slightly longer if there's more content on the page, but there you go. We've got a great little summary. And just to be clear, um, I asked it to summarize it in this way. You can actually do anything you want with it. You don't have to do a summary. You can pass it in as context into your AI prompt to just inform your prompt um, you know, about some information that you wanted to be aware of while running a request. Now, another thing that I want to make clear is that not all websites necessarily allow this. I did a test on the OpenAI website on one of their documentation pages and it just um, sort of declined the request. So it's not anything that we can really do about that. I think if certain websites don't allow that, um, you know, that's how it is but even a website like Apple seems to allow it. So I think that uh, for the most part, you should probably be good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly break down how I actually built this. I won't rebuild it from scratch, but I'll just go through the steps that I took. So the first thing is this input block. So this is the, uh, well, we have a lot of blocks here, so I'll just search, but this is the standalone uh, input field block. So that's very simple. It's just an input field. I added this placeholder text here that shows google.com and I gave the field ID a URL. So that is how I can reference the value from this standalone input block in an action. And so then the next part, which is the most important part, is my button. So this button is just a button on its own. It's not inherently connected to this input, but inside the click action, as I briefly showed before, I have three steps. So I have the web scraper, and in this case, I just have this simple form.url variable. I chose the URL ID for that field, and so that's how I reference the value here. So whenever the value changes in the field, then this form variable will be taking the updated value and sending it in an action um, when I hit that submit button. So then when you're building a multi-step action, you you know you click on the button after the after the step and then it creates another step. And what we're gonna do here is do this open AI request. So I gave a very simple prompt, summarize the following website content into five bullet points in markdown format. And then I just passed in the action steps dot one variable. So I admit there's a bit of uh, confusion sometimes around this. It's fairly simple, but each type of action uh, has a slightly different way of handling this. So in this case, the new web scraper action it just simply returns a value like this. So we're gonna go action steps dot one. One is the value of the first step. So in this case, we just have to know we're in step two, we're grabbing the value from step one, which is the response. Um, so in this case, action steps dot one is actually the whole text parsed from that website. And it automatically removes all the HTML. So it's just the text uh, for the most part. And then that's all I did. I didn't make any special changes here. And then the last step here is the update local state. So what this does is we're getting our, our text summary 
we are now needing to do something with it. And so I wouldn't necessarily have to do the local state. I could add it to a spreadsheet or do something else, show it in a notification. But in this case, we just wanna visually show it in the user interface. So I'm creating a value called summary, uh, which is my text summary. And then I'm setting that to the value of action steps dot two dot response. So just to show you how this works, if I go into this variable injector, I'm gonna to go to the previous step and then I'm gonna click on step two. And in this case, I just have to know that when dealing with open AI requests, I'm gonna to wanna to use the response um, field name. And so when I click insert, it injects that for us there. So that's one way to do it. And that's basically it. Otherwise, I just added a plain text field here. This is a column with a border uh, and a background just so that it looks a bit nicer. And then this is very simple. Um, you can see I've gone local state dot summary for my variable. And then this is not necessary, but I, ab I added this little default value, which is done with these two vertical bars. Um, I don't even know what they're called to be honest, but uh, they're on your keyboard. And so if you add two vertical bars like that, um, and then whatever value you add after that becomes the default. So you can see when I deselect it, um, because there's no value here, it's showing me the summary will appear here. But once a value does exist, then it gets replaced by the actual summary. So there you go. Very, very simple, um, at least in terms of just adding that URL to the action. There are a few steps to take to get it into a user interface, but we're actually working on some other ideas for ways to make it a little bit easier. So stay tuned for some more updates around AI actions and uh, all the fun things you can do with them. Thanks for watching.